Soil. It produces 95% of our food. But what does healthy soil look like? Isn't it just rocks and dirt? No. Soil is alive. It's truly the city that never sleeps. Teeming, buzzing, evolving. Millions of life forms tirelessly interacting and creating fertility in our beautiful soil. Continued life itself on this planet is utterly dependent on these microorganisms. Except, we are in danger of wrecking this underground galaxy. But, buried within the soil, is the power to help save us from ourselves and our self-inflicted climate disaster. Explore. Cover the secrets of the soil. In this city of a trillion life forms, one teaspoon of soil contains a billion bacteria. These minuscule beings have been working their magic for four billion years, and yet we still have so much to learn and gain from them. Bacteria break down dead plant and animal matter into essential nutrients. Nutrients which eventually refresh, restore and revive the soil. Their magic contribution is to recycle waste and turn it into goodness. They create the womb from which new life can thrive and prosper in the cradle of the soil. Bacteria are also the city's miners and cleaners, breaking up rocks and breaking down pollutants and toxins, cleansing the soil. Countless human lives have been saved in the past hundred years by antibiotics created from bacteria in the soil. And yet we know so little. How many other treatments and cures lie hidden and waiting to be discovered amongst the gazillions of bacterial citizens in the soil. But bacteria did not create antibiotics just for us to sort out our infections. They use antibiotics to collaborate with or destroy rival bacteria, to communicate with plants and to create pathways to move through the soil. Antibiotics are the tool set bacteria developed so that they could thrive and survive. Life in Soil City is never quiet. It's a super fast, high capacity, 3D network where plants and bacteria message and exchange critical data with one another 24 seven. Plants send out chemical signals to attract the bacteria they need to help them grow and resist harm. The bacteria provide food, antibiotics or toxins to help the plants protect themselves. Plants, in turn, suck carbon out of the air to feed the bacteria. Like nations making trade deals, they work together so that both parties survive and thrive. But as their needs evolve, so plants hurl out urgent messages for new aid. More and more bacteria respond and the whole network blazes into a wild symphony of interaction. But the bacteria are not alone. Danger lurks in the depths of the soil. Predators, such as protozoa, who come in a variety of forms. Pseudopods, 
Just a glimpse of those fat, blow-up legs approaching is enough to scare any bacteria. Then the hairy psyllids. Smaller but no less deadly. Those vibrating hairs are like porcupine quills to bacteria. Smallest, the flagellates. Whipping along with their tails, they swarm through the soil. Protozoa eat bacteria. See how the protozoa suck out the nutrients the bacteria stored. So fast, so efficient. Without them, the nutrients would be trapped for ages. Instead, the nutrients are released, set free to feed the plants, liberated to enrich the soil. There is more than one predator in the soil. Check out the nematodes. They eat just about everything. Bacteria, fungi, protozoa, plants, and even little bugs. They're feasting, spewing out ever more nutrients to enrich the soil. Healthy soil needs fungi, and fungi need food. Fungal threads spread themselves throughout the soil, creating huge, rapidly growing, intricate web-like structures. Why don't you follow them and see where it leads? Fungi are the soil's demolition crew, decomposing the toughest plant material out there. See? At the end of the trail, they deploy enzymes, helping them drain nutrients from their food. There, look, the fungus has lured in a nematode. In this densely populated city, you need friends. Fungi and plants have developed symbiotic relationships. They send requests. They barter nutrients. What the plant can't access, the fungus supplies. What the fungus can't get, the plant supplies. They are more than just good friends. See the plant calling for companionship and the fungi drawing closer. But for these two to trade, they must join forces and become one. Create bonds that cannot be broken. The fungi must enter the plant's root and create trading hubs. Let's zoom in and make this happen. Can you see the glowing exchange points inside the root? Navigate your way through them to activate them. There. 
that's what you did. Plant and fungi merging together to create a marketplace, trading nutrients and food. Activate the other exchange points. Look at the symbiosis you have created. Plant and fungi living as one, working and thriving together. But there's more to this deal than meets the eye. Fungi repay the plants by weaving spiderous networks around the roots. Some even provide antibiotics. The strength of their bond protects them from lurking pathogens and parasites. They've gone all the way and tied the knot. They are true soil mates. Earthworms. Healthy soil's most powerful ally. They shred huge amounts of organic matter. What goes in one end comes out the other as nutrient-rich manure, which radically intensifies the fertility of the soil. Like the enormous boring machines which drilled the Chang Tunnel, earthworms create highways for plant roots, allowing the soil to breathe, drain, and retain its nutrients. Without them, the soil would flood or dry up. They are truly the soil city's most generous benefactors. Now we come to the insects, such as arthropods. The soil is full of them. They take on the really big pieces of organic matter, marauding around chewing, breaking up, preparing the material for the bacteria and fungi to feast upon. Healthy soil is complex, fragile, and full of life where plants and diverse microbes interact, trade, and communicate. Where insects, worms, and microbes squeeze the last drop of nutrient from every morsel of organic matter. It is the most effective recycling plant on the planet. But do we look after this metropolis when growing our food? No. Many of us send in heavy machinery to break and crush the soil. We tear up the roots and slice the worms. Breaking the earth apart through cultivation such as plowing destroys the soil structure, limiting its ability to hold the right amount of water, leading to an increase in droughts and flooding. Microbes struggle to survive in these conditions and their populations decline. Then there is climate change, largely driven by the release of excessive amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere. This is at the mercy of soil preservation. There is three times more carbon stored in the soil than in all the plants and trees on Earth. Yet, every time a tractor plows or breaks apart the land, a vast amount of CO2 is released into the atmosphere. And we all lurch one step closer to our climate disaster. After cultivating a field, we often leave the soil with nothing growing in it. Exposed, unprotected, naked, prey to the wind and rain. Precious fertile topsoil is simply blown or drained away. 
Intensive farming treats soil like an endless resource, but we are destroying it up to 50 times faster than it is able to rebuild. We are assisting climate change, depleting our healthy soil and making it ever more expensive and complex to feed the planet. Let's be fair, breaking apart the land through cultivation feeds vast populations and helped us build our towering civilizations. But at what cost? We now realize that the short-term boosts that are breaking apart the landhold are outweighed by the long-term damage and destruction to the soil. If we carry on this way, we will run out of healthy soil to feed us. We have reached breaking point. It does not have to be like this. We don't always need to cultivate the soil. We can keep our soil's precious surface undisturbed and plant seeds lightly into its surface. Soil does not need to be left bare. We can plant cover crops. Try this. Go on. Cover crops protect the soil from being lost to erosion. They provide a bounty of nutrients that lure microbes back to the soil. But best of all, they trap and store carbon within the soil, helping us reverse our past mistakes. By keeping our fields always covered in crops and organic matter, not only can we protect our soil and bring it back to life, but we can remove mountains of CO2 out of the atmosphere. By not cultivating the land with tractors, we'll also save huge amounts of fuel, lowering our emissions further. See the carbon floating down and being restored to the soil. Saving our soil will help us save our planet. How we farm can be part of the solution to climate change, not part of the problem. But we can do more. Many of us currently rely on applying chemicals to our crops to meet the world's growing demand for food. Let's be honest, farming with chemicals was a huge leap forward, boosting the amount of food we can produce and populations we can support. By providing nutrients, disease protection and pest control for our crops. Chemicals have helped to reduce malnutrition, hunger and poverty across the world. But scientists have revealed we can no longer rely upon chemicals. We must update and refine. It has become a case of diminishing returns. The more chemicals you use, the more you have to use to get the same effect. It is becoming unsustainable. But why? Intensive farming replaces the lack of natural soil fertility and diversity with chemicals. Relying upon chemicals removes the need for crops to trade with microbes, so they don't. The crops don't need the microbes and they lose the ability to interact with them. They forget how to talk and evolution takes care of the rest. Just as we lose skills we no longer use, so the crops will too. Starved, only the ghost of these microbes remain. Pair this with continuous cultivation of the soil and what do you get? The natural fertility of the soil degrades and we have to rely on more and more chemicals to replace it. We can't keep this up. Not only do chemicals pollute the atmosphere in their production and application, but they can pollute our rivers, lakes and oceans too. In some cases, turning swathes of them into dead zones. We are also ravaging biodiversity. When we apply pesticides to kill the bad bugs, they often destroy friendly plant-protecting bugs too. To make matters worse, we often fill our fields with just one monotonous crop, repeating rows of all the same. This severely reduces biodiversity above and below ground, meaning less and less friendly microbes or insects to help our crops. We compound this by growing the same few crops year after year. A conveyor belt of repetition which breeds nigh on unstoppable weeds. And we have to rely on more and more chemicals to barely control them. And all the while, 
microbes, and insect populations continue to decline, and our reliance on chemicals only increases. We cannot carry on like this. We face an ecological collapse, and we simply will not survive. But there is hope. We can work with nature, not against it. We can harness the miraculous microbes dwelling in the soil. We need to learn from them, work with them, draw inspiration from them and protect their home. We can thrive as partners in their ecosystem. We can protect our soil and create a healthy underground cosmos brimming with diverse life. We can breed and plant smarter crops that excel at trading or joining forces with microbes so that the millions of microbes in the soil feed our crops the nutrients they need and help protect them from diseases and pests. We can look after the friendly insects, encourage them to protect our crops against the bad bugs. We can update our planting patterns, embracing diversity so that what we grow and how we rotate our crops minimizes diseases and revives the soil. We can use nature to reduce the chemicals we need, and when we do need them, we can be clever about it, delivering precise amounts to exactly when and where the crops need it. Meeting precise needs with precise solutions. Pair this with advances in technology, as well as continuing to uncover the secrets of the soil and we can update our ways of farming to sustain us into the future. These methods of farming, where we look after our soil and work with the life hosted within it, can regenerate the planet. These updates to our farming can massively reduce and offset our CO2 emissions. We can start making changes now. It will have an instant impact on our fight to reverse climate change Farming can lead the way by saving our soil, and feeding the world can save the world. We have the power. The food we eat is what makes us who we are. We can demand that our food is grown responsibly, grown so that with every harvest, we improve the soil and regenerate our environment. Know that with every harvest, we can bring our planet back to life. But we need your help. To find out how you can save our soil, please follow the link.